Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to make a high-key black and white landscape. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramadi. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France, and I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of this tutorial and all the past raw files. All you have to do is click here and subscribe to my newsletter and you will get an access to this page with all the raw files. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, in last episode, I showed you some of the new stuff that came out with Photoshop CC 2014. Pretty amazing stuff for photographer. Check it out. This week, I'm going to take you back to Florida, back to Dunedin, and we're going to do this high-key landscape. It's a very specific type of black and white conversion where you have a lot of very light and bright values with a bit of darkness. It's a whole workflow that I'm going to show you now. But also, I'm very proud to announce that I have a new course coming out by my friend Kelvin Pimon, who is my Photoshop and Lightroom guru, which is Gallery Black and White Portrait with Lightroom. There is a full presentation of this course at the end of this video. For now, let's go back to Florida and let me show you this full retouching of this high-key black and white landscapes. But I want to show you this. You see this photo, If uh, first I'm going to go for black and white because there is some good colors, but you know, I already had this one taken from this scene in color, so now I want to try something else. Now, a lot of people that I see doing lone exposure or black and white, uh, what they usually do is bring down saturation and then, you know, they can do the usual, like open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, you know, and make some good contrast and some good clarity, you know, and that's, that's what I see a lot, the type of photography, you know, uh, now this is fine, but you see this photo, I think, uh, could work very well as a high key photo. What is a high key photo? Well, let me show it to you. I'm going to reset this. A high key photo is something is a photo where most of the photo is white uh, and, and is very bright. Most of the histogram, instead of being completely scattered all over, is going to be more on this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the saturation and then I'm going to boost up the exposure and boost up the shadows. I'm trying to make this photo a lot brighter. Okay. And, uh, actually a bit more than this. And then I'm gonna bring down the black. So you see already the histogram is more on the right side. You know, uh, we, ha we, are, we are having a, mo a more brighter photo, but it's not over. Uh, I'm gonna take the crop tool, uh, take my angle, make sure that uh, I am, my horizontal line is completely straight. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a, a little panoramic view, something like that. I'm gonna take some of this sky here. And, um, and that's my basic. Okay, the clarity, I'm also gonna go minus on the clarity. And I wanna give it even more of a high key look. Okay, I'm gonna take out this little spot here. It's really bothering me because I was shooting at F18 and F18 with a filter, you know, any spots uh, you get very strongly. So now I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna make a, a big exposure on this one. I'm gonna make sure my flow and density is around 90. I'm gonna take a big brush and I'm gonna make the whole part of this photo brighter here, okay? This entire part of the photo a bit brighter. And now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna make my brush smaller, and I'm gonna press the Alt key, and my um, brush is gonna become an eraser, and I'm gonna erase uh, the brightness that I put, making sure I do not uh, go overboard, you know, just staying a bit like in the middle of the bridge. Because I, I only want to bright up everything but that little pier there, okay? Uh, and because if you go too much here, you're going to make like hollows. So I'm going to command Z that and to undo. And I'm just, you know, following this, I'm using the space bar to move my photo. And I'm just going to make this one a bit darker. Okay, and something like that. Making sure I don't uh, go over. Now it takes a, a bit of practice and a lot of work because... Um, I'm going to make this smaller, I'm going to click here and uh, I'm going to do the same thing here, holding the alt, the alt key, of course. We're just trying to erase what we did, uh, the brush that we did. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's important. What we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to make a high key photo. And one of the point of the high key photo is that some part of the photo is going to be dark and most of it is going to be white. So they, they, they really stick out. 
And, you know, as I say, every photo is a challenge and uh, every photo is open to creativeness. And uh, I was just playing around with this photo and came up with that look that I really liked. And I wanted to share it with you guys, you know, because I've been retouching over 10,000 photos and I can tell you every photo is a different story. That's why it takes a lot of practice to become really good and I still have a lot to learn. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger and take this out of the way. Making sure you don't go overboard because I don't want to have any hollows in this. Okay, so now I, I made everything brighter but this, right? Okay, now I'm going to click a new, make a new brush and I'm going to make this even, I'm going to brush here. Oh, I'm sorry, brush again, uh, making a big brush and I want to make this even brighter, this part here. Okay. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, I, I, let me just select this brush again. If you click here. Uh, on this brush, no, I actually did not. Uh, yes, if you click here, you can see with red, whatever is red has been brushed. So you can see that uh, I forgot to unbrush here. So I just want to make sure that. So, so make sure you press the Alt key when you do that, and you you know, and you you have your brush selected, the one where you did the big brush stroke, and uh, that's important. Okay, here I forgot also. I want to make sure this is black. Okay. Now, um, I was brushing here, actually, uh, making a new brush. And um, let me see. Now, I want this to be really darker. So I'm going to take my blacks and bring them down. So this is, you know, this is darkness against everything which is pretty white. Okay, now I'm going to make a gradient here. And usually gradients, I usually lower the exposure, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to make it a little brighter and I'm going to make a minus clarity. I want the clouds to be very fuzzy, very, very fuzzy. Uh, maybe the overall exposure is a bit too much. I'm going to lower it down a little bit. And I'm just trying for a very, you know, lone exposure kind of look. Okay. Now that's my basic of the look. Now I need to add more local adjustment to make it pop even more. So for this, I'm going to take the brush again, make a new brush. And I'm going to brush uh, in front of the brush, on top of the brush, I mean, I'm going to, but not everywhere. I'm just trying to make some parts of the photo, you know, where there is water uh, here and here, you know, a bit brighter, you know, the reflections. I'm just trying to get the reflections a bit nicer, something like that. Now, it's a bit too much visible at this point. Okay, I'm going to erase this last that I did here. So when you erase, you can also make a big brush and just erase using the, you know, the, the feathering of, of, of the, of the brush, you know, making a big brush, you see there is two circles, so it's very feathered so that uh, you don't see any brush stroke. Okay. Now I'm going to lower that. I'm just trying to make the photo a bit more interesting, you know, uh, click new and you know, the way to make interesting is to make an interesting lighting. Okay. Maybe just here a little brush again. And I'm just trying to add a reflection in the water, something like that. Okay. And uh, now I think I'm going to get the blacks even further down. One thing I want to do is add some clarity also on the bridge. So I'm going to take a new brush again and go for clarity, clarity, and add uh, some clarity on the bridge because Although I don't want the rest of the bridge to be too much, you know, um, I want everything to be a bit fuzzy, but I want the the the, uh, the wood to be as much clarity as it can. And this was like a five minute exposure. Five minute exposure is a lot. And you see, I'm I'm adding clarity, and it's in the same time it's uh, making everything a bit darker. Because sometimes clarity does that. Sometimes clarity also alters the expo exposure where you're painting. Okay, so let's look at the overall. All right, so clarity. Now this is starts to become uh, yeah closer to the what to what I want. So you see how this is becoming a high key. Everything, all the information is going to be on the right, and maybe the black's not so strong. And I actually like this type of photography. You know, it's a bit different than what I usually do, but I still wanted to get some details in the sky. Now I'm going to see if I can make one more. Uh, filter here and I want to see if I can lower a little bit the exposure or brighten up whatever is best Maybe brighten up a little more, you know, because it's making a contrast be between the darkness of the bridge and here which is very white so 
you know, I made the whole photo very white. Let me show you the before. That's the before. A backslash key, which is a nice uh, color. This is a color version that I did, but I, I wanted to get away from the color version. And this is what, what I came up with. So, you know, again, trying to be very creative and every, you know, Lightroom is so powerful that you can do almost whatever you want with your photo, but you're gonna try, you know, I just wanted to do something very different from last week, something, because I love this type of photo, you know, very fuzzy, very hairy, you know, very unreal. Uh, I think I don't like this part here. So maybe I'm gonna crop it a little bit just to take out this part and uh, yeah, something maybe lower a tiny bit there, you know, just to make it, one of the key things about composition is the message, you know, I'm trying to get out anything in this photo which is distracting the eyes so that all we see is this pier and, and some clouds, you know, trying to make a very graphical composition. So I kind of like that, it's totally the opposite of this, but it's just to show you that, uh, you know, it's, uh, the you know, with Lightroom, the sky is just the limit what you can create. Okay, guys, I hope you like this and this you find this a bit inspiring. And I will see you in another episode. Hi, guys, my name is Kelvin, and I want to talk to you about my new course, the Gallery Black and White Portraits with Lightroom. In this course, you will learn how to take maybe some missed photos or poorly lit photos and turn them into nice works of art. So here you can see uh, some befores. So you have this one and then after a little bit of Lightroom magic, you get this. And then you have another one like this, which we turn into this. We learn to manipulate light. We learn to add light where there wasn't some and take some light out to really sculpt the subject. And you learn to add a shallow depth of field, making the subject even more crispy and making the background even blurrier. And here's another before and another after. There's 11 projects in total and you really go through different methods of adding nice contrast and getting really crisp looks to get these intense portraits which you can then have in galleries. So I hope you check it out and I hope you enjoy it. Au revoir.